Hello everyone, I'm Alex. And I'm Sophie. And, and we, we are, are the Science, Science Kids. Kids. We believe that this video is critical to the survival of humanity and the planet. We are living in very different times, with the COVID-19 pandemic spreading faster than ever. As of today, the day of this being filmed, which is April 3rd, there are over 1 million cases worldwide of coronavirus, and it has amassed a death toll of over 60,000 cases, with cases in 197 countries. It's getting so bad that countries are on lockdown, and people are being forced to isolate and self-quarantine. So with all the chaos happening across the world, we wanted to break down the coronavirus pandemic as well as other viruses and epidemics that have happened in the past century or so and get to their core. And it turns out that the way that many of these pandemics and infectious diseases start is very similar and it's something that all of us and all of you watching this video can directly intervene in. Our incredible scientists and medical professionals are the ones carrying us through these desperate times. But before we resort to vaccines and cures, it's important that we all understand that the next epidemic could devastate us before we have a chance to intervene. There are ways that we, all of us and all of you watching this video, can help prevent things like this from happening in the future. And in order to understand what those things are, we must go back to the times of previous deadly pandemics and infectious viruses. Let's look back in time. Humans have been domesticating animals for over 10,000 years. It's a practice we've considered normal for the longest time. However, recently we've seen the direct relationship between the domestication of animals and some of the spreads of the deadliest and most contagious viruses in human history. But how? These two concepts are seemingly completely separate. Well, let's look into it. Viruses, unlike other organisms, cannot reproduce on their own. So they insert their genetic code into another organism, a host, who will execute the genetic code for them to reproduce new viruses. Now this makes them extremely dangerous, as they can adapt their genetic code to the host, the environment, often other animals, to spread between species. These type of viruses that are able to spread between species are called zoonotic viruses. We've seen cases of zoonotic viruses before. Some have been seen on a relatively small scale and some have been seen on a massive scale. For example, the bubonic plague of the 13th and 14th century affected one third of the entire population of Europe. It was originally a virus that affected rats till it evolved and crossed species to humans. But lately, we've seen deadly viruses affecting us a lot more than they should given the technological and scientific advances we've made since the 13th century. But instead, in the last century or so, we've seen the rise of infectious diseases such as the 1918 Spanish flu, HIV, measles, the SARS virus, and now COVID-19 or coronavirus. And those are just to name a few of them. Can you guess what those infectious diseases have in common? You guessed it. We believe that the history of zoonotic viruses can be distilled into two stages, separated at the time of the inception of factory farming. As you can see, over here we have two timelines, one being the first stage and the one being the second. They are separated by the time of the creation of factory farming, which we will for the sake of this video define as a system of rearing livestock using intensive methods by which poultry, pigs, or cattle are confined indoors under strictly controlled conditions. We are going to explore how factory farming has increased the risk of these dangerous zoonotic viruses crossing species by looking at some viruses in stage 1 and stage 2 and exploring their deadliness and their contagiousness. We'll be using this graph to measure those things. The y-axis represents mortality rate, a percentage that tells us the ratio of the people who die from the virus over the people who get the virus. The x-axis represents the contagiousness or r not. Basically, if a virus has R0 less than 1, it means that it's not likely to spread to someone else. If it has an R0 of 1, it might spread to someone else, one other person. And if it has an R0 more than 1, that means it could spread to more than one person and grow very fast. First up, on stage 1, we're going back to 1500 or so BC with the disease leprosy. Now, leprosy is not caused by a virus, it's a strain of bacteria. However, it's one of the first recorded cases of a zoonosis, and we thought it was useful to include. Leprosy was originally caused by a bacterium that affected water buffalo. After water buffalo domestication grew, the pathogen eventually crossed species. Up next, starting at around 14 or 1300 BC, we have smallpox, a disease that you're probably familiar with because it's still affecting us today. Smallpox comes from a virus that affected camels first, till it evolved and crossed species, affecting humans too. Smallpox has a mortality rate of 30% if left untreated, 
and an R0 of 5 people. That means if someone has smallpox in a room with a bunch of people, 5 other people can contract it. Luckily we now have a cure, and the disease was even eradicated at one point in the 1970s. Moving on till quite after the first cases of smallpox, all the way to the 13th and 14th century, we take a look at the bubonic plague, one of the deadliest diseases in human history, one that originally affected rats and other rodents. It had an R0 of 3, but most significantly, it had a deadliness of nearly 60% at the time. About 200 years later in the 16th century, coming from duck domestication came a disease we know to this day as the flu, or general influenza. It has a mortality rate of about 0.1% and a spread rate or R0 of about 1. However, different strains of it can be more deadly, as we've seen in the past, and we'll go over that in a bit. Around the same time as the origination of influenza came another virus, whooping cough, or pertussis. Originating from pig domestication, whooping cough has a mortality rate just under 1%, but it has a, pardon the pun, whopping R0 of 9. Just think about how fast that spreads. Starting in the 18th century came another virus, which came from cattle, measles. It's a virus that still affects us today. It's similar to whooping cough, which we just mentioned, in that it also has a death rate just under 1%, although slightly higher than whooping cough, and it also has an R0 of 9. Towards the end of the 19th century, a virus which came from chicken domestication, typhoid fever, started to spread. It had an R0 just over 1, and if left untreated, has a mortality rate of 20%. Luckily, now we have a vaccine that decreases the mortality rate to just 1%. The final virus we will cover for Sage 1 is one of the biggest ones ever, the 1918 Spanish flu. It has a relatively small R0 and mortality rate for a virus on such a large scale, with a mortality rate just around 2% and an R0 under 2.8. However, because of the circumstances of the time, such as the fact that World War I was occurring during the time of the spread of this virus, it led to soldiers traveling across the world, which made the virus spread much faster than it was supposed to for a virus of its virulence. This led to over one third of the entire human population being affected by this virus and 3% of the entire human population dying because of it. To start off stage 2, we're going to go over one of the most significant zoonotic viruses of the past century, HIV. HIV originally came from chimpanzees and eventually spread to humans. If left untreated and uncontained, it can have a mortality rate of 80 and an R0 of 6. Starting in 1996 came the disease Mad Cow Disease, which I think from the name you can figure out which animal it came from. Mad cow disease, like leprosy, is not a virus, but it is zoonotic. It's a prion disease, which is another type of pathogen. Now we're starting to get into a territory where some of you watching might even remember some of these zoonotic outbreaks, because they were very recent. In 2003 came the SARS virus, a virus which had an outbreak that luckily didn't become a pandemic. The SARS virus came from foxes, had a mortality rate about 10%, and had an R0 just under 3. In 2003, another bird flu, the same one that spread in 1918, H1N1, started to arise. It had just about the same mortality rate, but it had an R0 about half of the one in 1918, and we contained it a lot better. A strain of swine flu, a flu virus that came from pigs, had an outbreak which spread, but luckily didn't spread outside of the country the first case it originated in. This strain had a low mortality rate, about 0.1%, and an R0 of about 1.5. In 2012, we saw an outbreak of the MERS virus, a virus which came from bats. This is a very interesting virus because it had an extremely high mortality rate, nearly 40%, but it had an R0 under 1, so it was very unlikely to spread. In 2013, we saw another strain of bird flu with a similar spread rate and luckily with a lower mortality rate. In 2014, as some of you may remember, we saw the Ebola virus outbreak, a virus which came from bats. This virus was extremely dangerous with a mortality rate over 50% and it had a contagiousness or an R0 under 3, about 2.5. And finally, the one we are currently living through the COVID-19 pandemic, which has reached the entire globe. Originally coming from bats and pangolins, COVID-19, if left untreated, has a mortality rate of about 3% and an R0 of 2. 
So what needs to be done? What are we doing wrong? Well, we need to go to the source of this problem. The source of these zoonotic viruses. The domestication of animals. We've seen the correlation between the domestication of animals and the spread of these deadly and contagious zoonotic viruses all the way up to 10,000 years ago. And we're seeing it now, and it's only going to get worse from here. These days, animal domestication is even more compact and dangerous in the form of factory farms and wet markets. Even barring some of the other horrible aspects of factory farms and wet markets, such as the fact that excessive use of antibiotics can lead to antibiotic resistant superbugs, or the fact that land, water, and other resources are used extremely inefficiently, or the fact that the conditions in these factory farms and wet markets are horrible for both the animals and the workers, we've seen that these factory farms and wet markets are the perfect place for dangerous zoonotic viruses to brew and to become both deadly and contagious. As you can see throughout history, we have dealt with viruses with different degrees of how infectious they were and how deadly they were. We've seen in the past viruses that have been extremely contagious but not very deadly, or some viruses that have been extremely deadly but not that contagious. But imagine the next virus, a so-called virus X, which is sure to come out of factory farms or wet markets, having mortality rates the likes of the bubonic plague around 60% and having a virulence like malaria which is around 17. Or imagine this, out of these factory farms or wet markets, our excessive use of antibiotics leads to a bacteria that has evolved to withstand these antibiotics, which could kill millions if not billions of people. So where do we go from here? How do we make sure another horrible calamity doesn't happen again? Well, to solve the problem, we must eliminate its sources. And the sources are factory farms and wet markets. We hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for our next two videos. Don't forget to check out our website and our social media links in the description below. And as always, science is everywhere. And in everything. Bye. Bye.